Was Intel 100% truthful about the latest release of the ARC A770 GPU? They said it was not their goal to compete for the top performing GPU spot available on the market. They wanted to provide mid-tier performance, power efficiency, and all at a great price point. But did Intel actually sell themselves short in their initial push of these new ARC GPUs? Okay, so how does the Intel ARC A770 GPU actually stack up against the competition? Because when Intel launched their initial press release, they talked about video restoration and touch up actually being faster and the quality of that restoration being higher than anything in the past. So when I got the CLX system into my studio, I was ready to put it to the test. Now keep in mind, the first thing you're gonna wanna do if you do pick up one of these systems is turn on the rebar setting inside of the BIOS. That'll make sure you get maximum performance out of the GPU. Starting things out in the 3D modeling benchmarks with the system set to stock settings, nothing manipulated, nothing tweaked, just as it came out of the box, it showed incredible results. The i7-1300K and the ARC A770 GPU scored more than two times higher than the last system I built out with an i7-12700 and comparable GPU specs. So when Intel says they were not trying to compete, for the top spot in the GPU market, I would say they were selling themselves short. In Autodesk Maya, the Intel Arc A770 scored a 317. This puts the performance of the GPU on par with some of the most popular workstation GPUs. Now it's not all sunshine and rainbows for the new Intel Arc A770 GPU inside of 3D modeling. And we're gonna talk about that in just a minute. But first, I wanna thank Intel for sponsoring this video and partnering with CLX Gaming to build out a beautiful new PC for my studio. If you're wanting to get your hands on a system with the latest Intel Arc GPU, but you're not interested in going through the process of building your own PC, then you can customize the specs to your exact preferences and CLX will build it for you. I'll include links in the description below if you wanna check out all that they have to offer and the customization options you have. And best of all, each part in my system is from a notable brand. So if any issues pop up, I have access to professional customer service. Now it's not all bright lights and shining stars for the Intel Arc A770 GPU you inside of 3D modeling. If you've watched my channel for a while, you know that PTC Creo and SolidWorks are extremely particular about the GPUs they like when you're using the program. They want workstation GPUs and that was no difference here. Now, for the moment, the ARC A770 scored a 90 in PTC Creo and a 77 in SolidWorks. So at the recording of this video, if you are a big daily SolidWorks user, I would not currently recommend the ARC A770 GPU in your system. And in talking to the Intel engineers, they wouldn't disagree with me at the moment. However, they are constantly working to improve the communication between their hardware, the software, and the software of other products on the market. So just because it's not working really well at the moment doesn't mean it won't work well in the future. Now we've already seen examples of Intel improving their hardware and software in connectivity with other softwares. For instance, it was struggling a little bit with DirectX 9 when Intel Arc A77 first launched, and they quickly worked with the teams over there to get it running smoothly and at great performance. So there is potential that PTC Creo and SolidWorks will see improvement over time. However, we don't have any nailed down dates or any you know updates coming as of right now, right now, but it's something to consider if you are a SolidWorks user and would want to get into the Arc A770 down the line. Check back, check for updates. Intel, I'm sure, will make announcements on their progress for those programs. Shifting gears into another graphics intensive domain, let's talk about Blender. And let's just say that Intel's team absolutely crushed it in regards to Blender, scoring a 931 in the Blender Classroom test, which is the main test that I run for all laptops and desktop systems I have here in my studio. Now, not only did we see great results in Blender, but also After Effects, scoring one of the highest scores I've seen in After Effects on my channel. And again, for a GPU that they're saying they just wanted to get kind of mid-tier performance in regards to the scale of all the different GPUs available on the market. Now, one thing I would definitely recommend in regards to After Effects is to have at least 16 gigs of RAM in your system. Now, I personally would say that After Effects is best at 32 gigs to 64 gigs. Now, this system is equipped with 32 gigs of RAM, which makes it the perfect setup for After Effects. It's you know not overkill, but it's not gonna bottleneck your system. Anything at 16 gigs or less, After Effects just starts to not run as smoothly. So just keep that in mind in regards to After Effects. Now, looking at Photoshop, 
more than impressed with Photoshop, especially with the 16 gigs of VRAM inside of the Arc GPU. We had no concerns with even more intensive tasks and multiple layers. Now, the more layers you stack on, the more complex your Photoshop file can get and the system didn't have any issues with it. Now, in regards to Premiere Pro, the export times out of this system were great. Nothing that honestly blew me away. It was on par with the best that Intel has had to offer inside of their mobile laptop system. So I thought we would actually see better results, being that this is a desktop system with the Arc A770, but as far as 4K video editing is concerned, on par. Now, where I was impressed was the 6K video playback and export time. For 6K video playback, I saw zero drop frames, both for red footage and B-RAW footage. And in regards to the export time, it was the fastest export time I'd seen on my channel for both B-RAW and red footage. So if you're looking to edit high resolution footage with this system, then you're definitely going to be in good hands. Now, in regards to DaVinci Resolve users, the export time was fantastic, squeaking past the fastest export time I've seen on my channel so far by two seconds. So definitely has what it takes to run in DaVinci Resolve and export your footage quickly. All right, now that we've seen the raw performance that Intel's Arc A770 GPU has to offer, let's talk about the elephant in the room. This is first generation tech, but don't be too concerned. Intel has been producing the best snowmobiles. Wait, that's that's not right. Intel has been one of the companies producing some of the most revolutionary tech in the industry for decades. So although their entry into the GPU market may be fresh, they are not some fly-by-night company looking to cast their hook into the GPU market to make a quick buck and then peace out overnight. Intel is a massive company, which means everything they do takes years, even decades of planning at times to make sure they execute it correctly and in the right sequence of events. Now, obviously it's up to you if you want to be a first-generation adopter, but if you so choose to, I'll be right there with you as this is the system I will be using for the next couple of years. It's been a challenging time in the tech industry for everyone with supply chain issues, sales going down, prices going up, but all the while Intel refuses to participate in the price gouging practices of others in the market and offer a GPU that is truly budget conscious. Not only are their GPUs well priced, but easily available from suppliers like CLX. So you can get a custom built PC that fits your budget, is optimized for your workflow and ships straight to your door. Now, in this video, we've talked a lot about the Intel Arc A770 GPU, but recently I was able to also review the i5, i7, and i9 desktop 13th gen CPUs from Intel. And I think you'll be shocked about the difference between the i5 all the way up to the i9. So definitely catch that video here. Can't wait to see you over there.